Waxing Miracle Baby. Hello, Waxers, and welcome to Waxing the Record, Mains and Dutts. I'm your host, Mains, and my colleague in the Danger Zone in Rainford to Mr. Neil Dutton. Neil, the fantasy playoffs are either upon us or rapidly approaching. For others. Far, far, far too enthusiastic, open by you there, but. Yeah, I, I, am, I am in an enthusiastic mood. Yeah, I've been playing sport, Neil, so that you know you get the uh, endorphins flowing. No. No, you do. Fantasy playoffs, Neil. Uh, are you in any of them? Yes, I'm in a I'm in a quarter final this week. Um, I'm, you know, as you know, as 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 Chris Wesley once told me, don't name drop. Uh, I am playing Adam Rank. Okay. Quarter final. Um, that is Scott Fishbowl, is it? To have. No, no, no. The Scott Fishbowl. I'm in the I'm in the playoffs for that as well. Nice. Nice. Uh, that is that's reached the stage now. It's not head to head anymore. It's now basically it's your weekly score and they add your average weekly score to it. So okay. that's how you progress. Nice. Uh, so last week I managed to uh, pull up serious numbers despite the fact that one of my quarterbacks was Nick Foles who scored me minus points. That's it, uh, yeah. He didn't do well. Yeah, but luckily having, you know, Jack Doyle, Travis Kelsey, Alshon Jeffrey, they helped. So And James White who finally nice, did something. Nice, 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 nice. Love to, love to see it. Love to see it. Usual fare this week. We'll plug into the mains. A uh, few stories. Then we're going to go fancy. Help you either get to the fancy playoffs or win your fancy playoff matchup. Um, darling, loser. And then, if you if you like it, just on a one-week rotor, let's give you our teams of the week. So let's start with uh, plugging into the mains. Neil. Um, Ron Rivera f- fired in Carolina. I guess the question we I have is: Is it a just a new owner statement, or was it actually time to go for for Ron? It could be said to be both, um, because David Tepper, when he came in, gave him his due. He did give Herney and uh, Rivera. He's given them two seasons. Basically, he's given them two seasons. Um, to, to to see what they get. To see, basically, he didn't want to come in, blow it all up, and run the risk of those two going elsewhere and being successes. So he wanted to see what they could do. You can't argue that since they got to the Super Bowl, they have been they have been mediocre, and that's what David Tepper said he doesn't want. I believe they are 15 and 15, or something stupid like that since the Super Bowl, or 32 and 32. I can't even remember how long ago it was they got there. Um, and nine seasons is an awful long time in the NFL. So you can't argue that he was successful. He won, you know, he only had two winning seasons, but one of them they went to the Super Bowl, and another one I think they were the number one seed or at least the number two seed. It's just a question of again, it comes down to that when the area you're supposed to be the specialist of on your team starts to look like the weak link, you're in trouble. So you can argue that it's always a bit unfair when you fire one guy, but then the gap that he leaves is filled by everyone else who was already there. But I think it's the time of the time of year. They just think, look, we just don't want you here. So you can start making plans for next year and we'll just carry out the string with these. Um, yeah. But, you know, he will, he, he will not be unemployed for long if he wants to be employed. Yeah. I assume he will get a job. I think, you know, Dave Tepp has taken over in Carolina and he wants to make a statement. He's he seems brash. He seems, like he, you know, he didn't make his money um, um, doing something that he wasn't in charge of, and he, I think he wants to be in charge. He never had Ron Rivera. Um, you wonder if what this means for Mister Haley. We'll find that out, I guess. Um, I think they just want to start as early as possible, like in terms of getting a coach in. They have talent. It's I wouldn't mm. say it was necessarily a destination place, and therefore you need to get ahead of the game, because let's be honest. Um, Washington's not a great place, so whatever. But the Giants could be available. Um, you know that 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 is a marquee franchise in the NFL. Terrible talent and whatever at the moment, but even so, it's the New York Giants. So you need to get ahead of some of these teams. Uh, it was mentioned by 
uh, Charles Robinson on the uh, Yahoo NFL podcast that David Tepper was obviously a minority owner of the Steelers. Yeah. And he has talked about maybe creating this new role, um, like not quite the GM, but better than the assistant GM, some kind of role. And he did mention that um, Kevin Colbert is out of contract at the end of this year. And that maybe, you know, the, the Steelers connection there might yeah. be someone they want to bring in. Because, I mean, <laughs> let, let's look at the Steelers. They're on the third string quarterback and they're on course for the playoffs. So I think we can say that they've been nailing their drafts to an extent, especially on defence. And that's an area where you look at the Panthers and think that's somewhere where they really need to get better. But yeah, it's it, 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 it does seem to be an attractive... Uh, it would seem to be an attractive spot because of the talent. It's obviously they have the big major question marks of what's happening at quarterback. Um, and the vibe seems to come out, be coming out still as strong as it was a few weeks ago that it's likely not going to be Cam Newton's team. Which which leads you to think that the new the new um, head coach GM whatever is going to, is going to be moving in with a new quarterback because I don't think Kyle I don't think Kyle it's Kyle Allen it, that's the Allen in yeah in in Carolina so many Allens you get confused I don't see him as being the answer so if you're not going with Cam you're not going with Kyle Allen that means you're starting from scratch. And, you know, any new head coach or general manager or even Mr. Tepper himself may want to look at a situation where this team has holes in the defence and they spent a top 100 selection on a quarterback who got beaten out by an undrafted free agent who we've seen is not very good. Yeah. Um, next story, Neil. Uh, lots of shocking results last week in the NFL. I've got three. Which was the most shocking for you? Were there? Washington over Carolina. Miami over yeah. Phil- Miami over Philadelphia, or the Bengals over the Jets. Which one surprised you the most? So you're not surprised by Ma- a- Philadelphia. Are you most disappointed by Philadelphia? That's not my question. And you're not surprised by Philadelphia because you know you're expecting bad things. Um, but which most surprised you? I mean, I was absolutely the- floored that the Washington semi-professional football team were down 14-0 on the road. And one. The most surprising one would be for me would be the Jets, who had looked competent and efficient in previous weeks, not even turning up against the Bengals. Um, the problem is with the Panthers. Yeah, they went fourteen 0 up, but what do the Panthers allow their opponents to do? Run the, Run ball. the ball. What yeah. does Bill Callahan want to do? Run the ball. So all you had to do was make a couple of stops on defense. And they were going to play right into Washington's hands. And thus, that is what happened. The Bengals looked better with Andy Dalton. Not hard. But the Jets had scored 34 points in three consecutive weeks. And then don't even get into the red zone against the Bengals' defense. Now, that that was... Having, you know, the slight building up of goodwill that Adam Gase had done in three weeks potentially was destroyed in one afternoon. And the other game I don't even want to talk about because... It was an abomination. The the other game that you don't want to talk about, which I completely understand, has red flags everywhere over a number of different situations. Um, I think the only thing I will say is we were we were all drastically wrong on the roster strength and depth of the Philadelphia Eagles, and just leave it at that. That that's where we were wrong. Yeah. We thought they were going to be great, and they're not. The end, and they probably could still make the playoffs. You know, and, and that would be an abomination and, as well. Well, it would, but the other team that's going to make it is the Dallas Cowboys, and they're garbage. Um, Bengals over Jets shouldn't be surprising because it's the New York Jets. And mm. let's be honest. Let's go um, our local area. Let's go uh, relevancy of today. The New York Football Jets are Everton Football Club. Just when you think they can't do something to disappoint and anger their fan base anymore, they do it again. Every yeah. time that girl puts the ball down, Charlie Brown goes to kick it and doesn't realise that she's going to move the ball away again. Yeah. To quote you know, from Dumb and Dumber, you know, just when I thought you couldn't be any more dumber, you go and do this. And totally redeem yourself. Exactly. So, 
So for me, it's Washington. Although the established the run concept is hilarious, um, to 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 rack up like somewhere in the region of twenty eight unanswered points against another NFL team is is a hilarity in its in its purest form. Final story. Whilst Neil. establishing the run, yeah. Whilst establishing the run, and and getting and getting Washington fans excited by Darius guys. Um, final question, Neil. Who's done a better coaching job this season, uh, Mike Tomlin or uh, Flores of Miami? For different reasons, you could say, but you know, you, you could argue for both of them. But I just think <coughs> for the absolute show that we know that Pittsburgh has been in the past with Ben creating drama, with Antonio Brown creating drama, with Lady on Bell creating drama. Then all of a sudden they go away, and all of a sudden the roster looks like, oh, we're so depleted. We could, we just traded away a first round, first round pick that could actually be a top ten pick. This is the season from hell. Oh look, they're in the wild card. I think it's hard to come away and not be absolutely blown away by the job Mike Tomlin has done. Brian Flores, he's got the players believing that he. It would be so easy for a coach to go into a situation where they are organisationally tanking and the coach to get swept up in that and buy into it and, you know, keep trotting out the piss poor quarterback, you know, make bad decisions, just basically do nothing to try and stop, stem the tide. But he's managed to convince players who, it's not a talented roster. No. It really is not. But he's managed to get these players, A, believing that he believes in them. And they can now believe in each other to an extent that... I mean, we know what Ryan Fitzpatrick is at this stage of the game. We know what he's going to give. And we see that he's having fun. And one thing we always notice, I say it's a bit of criticism of Carson Wentz this year. He doesn't look like he's enjoying himself, which is not unsurprising. You look at the Bengals, they, they're not, they've not been enjoying themselves. The Cardinals' defence probably don't enjoy themselves. But Devontae Parker, Mike Gusecki, Ryan Fitzpatrick, these people are balling. So it's hard. You, know, you can't say that Brian Flores hasn't done a tremendous job. But unfortunately, as it's a results-based business, if the if the Tomlin Steelers get into the playoffs this year, he's coach of the year. I said this a few weeks ago, and I, I stand by it. The thing I find most interesting about Mike Tomlin is multiple times in this show, we've attacked him for what we thought as having a... A talented roster and not making the most of it, and his teams playing down mm-hmm. to opposition. Where this year is the complete opposite. Where now, when you look at it with hindsight, you wonder if the only reason that that group of players, all beginning with B, were held together and didn't spontaneously combust on a weekly basis is because of Mike Tomlin. I mean, let's look at what. Antonio Brown has done since he left the Pittsburgh Steelers. Are we supposed to assume that he wasn't doing that beforehand? Of course he was doing it. Just no one found out about yeah. it. You know, Lev Bell, Big Ben, all massive pains in the backside. I'm sure Mike Tomlin wants the talent but doesn't want the headache. This year he doesn't seem to have the headache and therefore his team is playing well. So... Mike Thomas done a wonderful job. As I said a couple of weeks ago, the issue with Brian Flores is it's a high possibility that people above him want him fired because he's actually not doing the job that I think they wanted him to do. Um, and in that, um, what I mean by that is he's winning games. Um, and he's winning games well. and They're competitive and they weren't at the start of the season. And I think he should be commended for that. And the Miami should be happy that they're in a position to do that. The issue is now, I think they're... F- fourth pick and mm. and Pittsburgh keep on winning at one stage they were first pick and it looked like Pittsburgh were going to be second pick and they were the big winners um, but now we'll see um, I I like I like the position of both head coaches at the moment and, and good luck to them and their franchises I think it's almost as well I mean just hear me out here but the Pittsburgh Steelers decided, do you know what? Let's put this team on the back of the defense. That's worked historically. And it's it's almost okay. like doing it again. Yeah, it's almost like doing it again is what Tomlin needed. But as you say, I mean, Flores at the moment, his job, it's akin to what happened the very beginning of the X Files. Dana Scully was assigned to the X Files to debunk them. 
and get it scrapped. And instead, she became, you know, instead she became a key part of the case. It's like, no, this isn't what we wanted. It's what you've got. Exactly, exactly, Neil. Neil, as we said, fantasy playoffs are either looming or upon us. So people need your expert advice to find out who they should be picking in their lineups this week. Firstly, who should they pick in Fancy Darling? Hello, darling. Well, one of the darlings was one of the darlings of last week, and that's Mike Gusecki. Um, He has become a much larger part of the Dolphins' offense. He's pretty much one of only two options he's got to throw to. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, it's Gusecki or Devontae Parker. Um, the, the Jets have not been a bad matchup. Uh, sorry, the Jets have not been easy for tight ends this season. I'm not saying, you know, it's, it's not a terrifying matchup. I mean, it's not as scary as sharing a taxi with Prince Andrew, for example. Uh, but it's, you know... We'd be fine. I think he's getting... We'd be fine. He's getting enough volume that he can still deliver uh, in fantasy. And we're getting to the stage of the season, I say, I started this last week, I went with it again this week. Don't get cute. Go with the people who are producing... So, I mean, Jack Doyle was a st- was stored last week. I thought he'd be. Gazeki came through, and he's going to come through again um, because the Jets give up an awful lot of receive- receptions to running backs, so the short area of the field. The Dolphins don't have anyone to throw it to there. That's where Gusecki's going to have to make his living. So I think he can do it this week. So he's my fancy darling. Excellent, Neil. Um, obviously, what you need to avoid are single pointers and zero pointers, they will be fancy losers, and Neil's going to explain which one you shouldn't pick this week. Sometimes you, get, you can get caught up with how good a matchup looks on paper and think, well, all I have to do is plug him in. This season, it's been like, you know, oh, it's a tight end starting against Arizona. Plug in, he'll be fine. This is, you know, you've seen the people who put up numbers. I mean, Tyler Higby, for God's sake. Yeah. The Carolina Panthers' run defense is abysmal. They cannot stop anyone. We saw, as I say, that the run was established last week. Uh, both guys and Peterson eating. That's why some people may think this is a great week to plug Devonta Freeman in. This would scare me because Devonta Freeman is not very good. No. He used to be, but he's lost it. He's not the player he once, he once was. If you look this season, I mean, he's averaging 3.4 yards per carry. Not great, Bob. Um, he's got, you know, he has got 42 receptions, but that's great. But it's, it's seven yards, you know, it's seven yards uh, per reception average. He's actually worse at home as well when he's running the ball than he is away. He averages 2.7 yards per carry at home. I guess four point one on the road. So they're at home to the Panthers. I just think he's lost. I think it's gone. I mean, he he was always a better player than his athleticism ex- suggested he would be. And on paper, this looks like a great matchup, but it's really not. In terms of if you're out of the fantasy playoffs, you can always do daily. And this week, we're going to give you who we believe are your teams of the week. Mains and Dots Daily Fantasy Team of the Week Show me the money Neil Who do you have as your quarterback this week? My quarterback As a cricketer or someone who plays cricket You know, um, I, you should know You should always fear the duck But not this week uh, I've gone with Duck Hodges for Pittsburgh Against the Cardinals He's 5,900 Cardinals defence is trash and I know I said this a couple of weeks ago And I got Proved wrong by um, by the Falcons. Yeah, I, I wasn't wrong. Uh, the numbers backed me up. I wasn't wrong. Uh, this is a terrible defense. Uh, Doug Hodges is being efficient. He's not being asked to carry an offense. He's not being asked to throw it fifty times a game. But he is hitting on the occasional big play. And to be fair, he only needs you know one big play a game to carry value. Um, so I like him this week. Uh, he's not going to be a superstar, but I don't think he's, <laughs> in the words of Mike Tomlin, he's not going to kill this team. Yeah, my quarterback is also Devlin Duck Hodges, who goes hunting on a weekly basis with James Washington. Interesting. Um, America's a, a random place. Um, I love the American football. rest of the stuff can give or take, if I'm honest. 
Um, I was in the trash. Uh, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, and uh, I'm I'm also backing Pittsburgh to beat Arizona in my uh, touchdown three. Yeah, Pittsburgh are minus two and a half. Uh, Neil, a Neil, who is your uh, Christian McCaffrey running back one? My Christian McCaffrey running back one, two hundred dollars cheaper this week than he was last week, is Christian McCaffrey at ten thousand three hundred. Still averaging thirty one point three DraftKings fantasy points per game. The Falcons' defence is not very good. There, I said it again. Because even last week, last time, when they shut him down, he got 30 points. They're crap. He is not crap. He's very, very good. The, the Panthers have got absolutely nothing to play for, except the chance that Christian McCaffrey could break the NFL yards from scrimmage record. If he does, it would be because he's still delivering fantasy value. 10,300. As I've said, don't care. He's getting picked every week. Um, my name is Paul Mannering, and I endorse this message. Uh, 10,300. I also have Christian McCaffrey. Um, as you quite rightly pointed out, um, he's two, $200 cheaper than he was last week, um, and he's playing a much worse defence. And Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Um, who's your running back two, Neil? Running back two is a player who actually came to play this week, uh, last week. Um, had his has his best game of the season. James White. Um, they're playing the Kansas City Chiefs at uh, Gillette or Foxborough, however we call it these days. Now there is the temptation that what they may do is lean on Sony Michelle because everyone's shown you can run on the Chiefs. But I just I don't back the offense. I don't think the offense is good enough to do it even with Sony Michelle. So I think there's a chance that this could be something of a shootout which would be great for White if it is, because we already know how good a receiver he is. Last week, eight receptions for 98 yards. Uh, then he had 79 on the ground as well. Um, he had two touchdowns. Um, he's not been great this season. I say He's averaged 18.9 rushing yards per game, 46.5 receiving yards per game, but he does have three touchdowns. Two of them did come last week. I just think this, the shootout potential of this game, and, I, you know, I think Brady is running out of reliable weapons. I think James White is still one of them. Um, my, my story's got a narrative, Neil. Um, Dalvin Cook is injured. Dalvin Cook said he's going to play. However, the Minnesota Vikings are at home to the Detroit Lions, and there's a high possibility that this game could be a blowout. Therefore, um, my running back too is Alexander Matheson, who is Dalvin Cook's um, backup, who I expect to get a lot of a lot of rub this week. He's 4,500, which gives you a little uh, change in your back pocket for later on. Uh, and I expect him to uh, to have the majority of the carries and, and uh, receptions this week in the backfield, because why waste Dalvin Cook if there's a chance he could aggravate that shoulder injury. Because Mike Zimmer's an idiot. That is, a, that is a, an issue. But he's a conservative idiot, Neil. And conservative he's a high-T conservative idiot. Yeah, I guess. We'll see. Hey, who's your wide receiver one? Um, Ducks hunting partner, James Washington. Uh, 6,000. He doesn't get a lot of volume, but he's got a big play in him a week. He's... One of those Deshaun Jackson light players who you know he's not, he's never going to get you know fifteen targets, and you know there's a good chance he could get two for twenty four and nothing, or he could get two for seventy eight and two. Uh, I say Car- Cardinals uh, defense is garbage, um, so yeah, six thousand dollars James Washington. Finally, a Washington I can get behind picking. We, um, my wide receiver one is Chris Godwin. Um, Tampa, Tampa Bay are playing the Indianapolis Colts. Rod Godwin. I, 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 Rod, Rod God. Um, just, just awful. Um, must not make inappropriate gags for five minutes. Um, yeah, I'm picking Chris Godwin. Um, I haven't, haven't been able to enjoy uh, the world of Tampa Bay offense as much as I should in fantasy or in DFS. So I'm going to take the opportunity this week with Chris Godwin with a favourable matchup against the Indianapolis Colts. He's 7,300. And Rod God is, is their best receiver. Mike Evans is in a massive rut the last four weeks. 
Um, obviously, you know, he was he was setting a career pace at one stage, uh, but then the last four weeks, for some reason, it's gone. He's still getting the targets, uh, but last week he averaged four yards per target, which is shite. Which is on good. Uh, who's your wide receiver two, Neil? Uh, same game, different side of the field as Zach Pascal. Um, he's 5,500. Hasn't looked terrible this season whenever T.Y. Hilton has missed. He's not been a superstar, but last week he had 10 targets, 7 receptions for 109 yards. That's not too bad. Um, does have um, quite different home road splits. Uh, in his away games, total in 5 away games this season, he has 6 receptions. Uh, as opposed to 24 in seven home games. Uh, But, as I say, if T.Y. Hilton is still injured, Paris Campbell's still injured, Marlon Mack is probably going to be back, but we've seen that the Buccaneers are not terrible against the run. It's going to be a concentrated passing game, like it was last week, and that means it's going to be you know target time for Jack Doyle and Zach Pascal. Um, My wide receiver two is Jamison Crowder in Miami at the Jets. Um, Sam Sam Donald seems to have a um, only can throw to one right wide receiver per game concept, which is interesting. I'm hoping this week it's Crowder. Um, regardless of what we think of the uh, Eagles last week, they did score 28 points and Carson Wentz did look better and they did throw all over the Dolphins. I expect similar from, from the Jets. Whether they win or not irrelevant, but Crowder should get a lot of play. Uh, he's 5,300. Um, who's your wide receiver three, Neil? Robbie Anderson of the Jets. Um, one of us, one of us I, is going I, to be right, Ian Hill. One of us will be right, or we'll both be wrong. Um, yeah, I see, I see what you mean. Obviously, he, Donald does look at the moment that he can only really prop one of them up. Last week it was Robbie Anderson, um, seven receptions on ten targets for 101 yards. He's another player who his home and road splits are very, very. Uh, you know, he has 18 receptions at home. He has 18 receptions away. He averages 18.7 reception, uh, yards per reception at home, 11.7 yards per reception away. His long, his longest reception away from home this season has been 22 yards. His longest reception at home is 92. Um, we saw last week that the Eagles wide receivers were making plays against mm, the Dolphins. Exactly. Yeah, this, this is a mythical concept. Uh, I just think Robbie Anderson's another player like James Washington. He doesn't have to get a large workload to return value. Um, my wide receiver three is Alan Lazard, um, Green Bay Packers. They are playing Washington at home. Um, big week last week for Lazard against the, against the Giants. Um, and Washington's defense is just as bad. Um, well, Washington's pass defense is just as bad. Let, let me um, paraphrase. He's 4,200 as well, which is cheap as chip for someone who last week uh, got over 80 yards and a touch. So, uh, thank you. In, in the snow. So, uh, I'll be having myself some of that, please. He does Type... seem to be a favourite of Aaron Rodgers as well, which always helps. Well, I, I think this is like. That's, that's an Aaron Rodgers forte, right? It's very rare that he has one of them lads who he just throws to one week and never throws to again. You know, he's mm. like, I like him, therefore I'm going to throw to him. And Lazard yeah. has come into that kind of situation. Um, um, the, on the, the latest ep- episode of Wrote Underworld uh, was friend Matt Kelly was talking to Chris Rayborn and he's, he, he posed a very interesting question. Who would win a race at the moment, Tyler Eifert or Jimmy Graham? And would this race ever end? It probably wouldn't end. I want to say wouldn't end. Irresistible force meets an immovable object, Neil. Yeah. Um, who's your tight end, Neil? Speaking of tight ends, uh, Mike Kosecki, 4,000. Say Jets, not been terrible against tight ends, but vo- this is a volume play. Um, I've gone I've gone volume play, and, and someone who got a lot of play last week, and that's Jack Doyle, um, 4,600. Yeah. He's player. Yeah. Uh, he's playing. She the, Jack Doyle, huh? He's playing the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, on good against tight ends, um, and got a lot of play last week with now Ebron out of the out of the uh, out of the the squad for the rest of this roster for the rest of the season. I like Doyle. Uh, I've always have mainly due to the fact he's a, a 1920s Chicago gangster. Uh, so 4,600. Yeah. I picked Jack Doyle. 
Who's your flex, Neil? My flex is Jamal Williams of the Green Bay Packers. Mm. Now, this would be a very, very good play if Aaron Jones doesn't play, uh, because annoyingly those two have almost a 50-50 work, uh, you know, work split. Aaron Jones was a superstar while Devontae Adams was out the lineup because Aaron Jones picked up an awful lot of the receiving slack. Since Devontae Adams has come back, Aaron Jones has lost that. So now his opportunities with Jamal Williams are becoming something that they, he has to take the most of, has to make the most of, sorry. And he really hasn't. He's not been able to separate himself from Williams. Now, if Jones doesn't play, that means Williams should get that backfield all to himself. And as you quite rightly pointed out, the Washington defence... While the run defense isn't too bad, if it just keeps getting, you know, keeps getting pounded on, it's going to break. Yeah. Um, my flex is Bo Scarborough, uh, Detroit at Minnesota. Um, we all enjoyed... Scarbados. Scarbados, of course. Um, we all enjoyed the uh, Thanksgiving and the Bro Dynasty, but I think Scarborough was sneaky good... And I expect them to be okay against Minnesota. They will look to establish the run, quote unquote. So uh, yeah, Bo Scarborough is four thousand five hundred. Blow and bow. Yep, absolutely blow and bow. Uh, Neil, who is your defence and special teams? Uh, I've got Carolina Panthers playing the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, as trash as the Falcons' defence is, their offensive line is even worse, uh, which gives Matt Ryan absolutely no time at all. Um, so. Ryan is being sacked at a career-high rate. Uh, his career-high for sacks in a season is 44. He's on 38 already, and he's got four games to go. Uh, the Panthers have sacked Ryan the most of any team he's played. I think they've sacked him 57 times in his career. Um, so I think that should continue. Despite the fact that the Falcons will try and establish the run, there's that word again, uh, try and establish it, but they won't because this is what they do. They'll they'll go back to trying to pass, the, pass it and that'll make Matt Ryan a sitting duck with that offensive line. So 2,800, Carolina Panthers stacking nicely with Christian McCaffrey. Neil, this week we get the opportunity to do something that we didn't think we were going to be able to do. For the rest of our lives. And that is. He hath returned. Pick on Eli Manning. And I'm disappointed. Nay hurt. That you haven't tried to do such situation. For 3,400. I have picked the Philadelphia Eagles. As the Eagles are playing the Giants. At home. In what could be. Eli Manning's last NFL start. Can I give you some. Some figures. For this game, KC of the good people of Bleeding Green. Please Bleeding do. Green Nation. Eli Manning is 116 and 116 in his career as a starting quarterback. He is. So if he loses this, he will become sub 500. Yeah. The Philadelphia Eagles have never, ever led the all time series against the New York Giants. They are level at the moment. And. Donovan McNabb has the same number of wins as Eli Manning in the last 22 games between these two teams. And that is why Donovan I Donovan McNabb picked... last played for the Eagles in 2009. I know when he played for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I know, but I... the people, the person at home might not know that. Um, that's why I picked the Philadelphia Eagles, Neil. I've also picked the Philadelphia Eagles in a touchdown three. Minus ten and a half is not enough. Give me more. I don't care how bad, quote unquote, the Eagles have been. The Giants have been worse. Right. Do you know how bad the Giants have been? Washington and Miami are beneath them, i.e., higher up in draft order. That's how bad the Giants have been. See, last week was embarrassing for the Eagles. The whole season has been disappointing. But there are things, at least there's a few things of like, okay. Retool, reload, go again in 2020. If the Eagles lose to Eli Manning, the Giants, I want Peterson's head on a spike. And I don't want Doug Peterson to lose his job, but if you lose to the Giants, get out. Be gone. Yes, indeed, Neil. Quickly, Neil, let's recap on our teams. Who's your quarterback? Doug Hodges. Same. Running back one? Christian McCaffrey. Or as we will now call it for the rest of the season, the Christian McCaffrey position. Me too. Um... Running back two. Sweet feet, James White. 
I've got Alexander Matteson, wide receiver one. Duck Hunter, James Washington. <laughs> Just remember that Nairs game. Um, wide receiver one is Chris Godwin for me. Wide receiver two, Neil. What a game. Zach Pascal. Yeah, I've got Jameson Crowder. Uh, wide receiver three. Robbie Anderson. I've got Alan Lazard. Tight end. Mike Gazeki. I've got Jack Doyle. Flex. Jamal Williams. I've got Bo Scarbados. And Neil, who's your defence and special teams? Carolina Panthers bringing the pain. Oh, it's an Adam Shine classic. Uh, I've got uh, the Philadelphia Eagles because they're playing Eli Manning and I feel it would be unfair if someone didn't pick against them. Uh, Neil, where can people catch you for the rest of the week? On the Twitter, at end up 13 go back, say we're late in the week, but if you go back and look at my wide receiver target report for last week, my five stats to know from last week, my tight end streamers, we're going into important, very, very important week of the fantasy season. These guys can help you. I've done. I've not just given you the three main ones. I've given you a host of other names who can help. And here's a little bonus as well. One name I didn't mention. If Ian Thomas is available in your league, pick him up. If Greg Olson doesn't go, Ian Thomas was the tight end six in games that uh, Greg Olson missed last year. The only danger would be he's hardly been used all year. We don't know what his rapport is with Kyle Allen. I've also got a couple of things coming out on. Excuse me, on the Ravens wire. I've got my scouting the scouting the opponent. We should look at the Buffalo Bills from a tactics and tendencies point of view. I've got a matchup, the key matchup, which is Lamar Jackson against Sean McDermott. And also I have a one that should be coming out. It's the one player on the Bills roster that would look great in Raven in a Ravens uniform. And I'll leave that one at that. And hopefully I'll be back on with, with Nat and company on Sunday night as well. Um I am at Mainzy7. Um, I am doing the tight end three. I am clinging on to being above 500, but it's been tough sledding the last few weeks. Hoping this week is much better. That comes out tomorrow. Um, the games I am picking are Giants at Philadelphia, Steelers at the Cardinals, and also the final game is Chargers at... Yeah, Chargers at Jags, Minshew Mania, back in our lives. Um, Jacksonville forgot one thing, Neil. What was that one thing? Nick Foles is only good enough in an Eagles uniform. Um, Absolutely. Co- combined, we are at waxing underscore lyrical. For those who start their fancy playoffs this week, we wish you well. For those who are one week away, good luck in your final week and make sure you get that playoff position you need. Until next week, these top guys are out.